And we got a snapshot of how the public's feeling about all this. The latest Monmouth University survey, when asked about Donald Trump's role in the January 6th insurrection, 38% of those polled believe he was directly responsible. 25% believe he encouraged those involved. 33% believe he did nothing wrong. 41% of those polled believe Trump should be charged with crimes related to the attack. 34% opposed charging him. 25% not sure here. Meanwhile, this poll shows faith in American government is on the rebound. Half of Americans now believe the U.S. system of government is sound. That's up from 36% in June. It's the first time the number has reached 50% in more than two years. Interesting. However, a majority of Republicans, 61%, still believe the big lie that Joe Biden is only president because of voter fraud. Joining us now here in New York, Colorado Secretary of State, Chair of the Democratic Secretaries of State, Jenna Griswold. She's running for re-election in November. Secretary Griswold, thanks for being here. Uh, there is a slate of Republican challengers right now running for re-election who have just explicitly said, we don't believe Joe Biden won the 2020 election. The one in the man in Arizona, Fincham, has gone so far as to say, if Joe Biden runs and wins again in 2024, I can't promise I'll certify that result either. Tell us what it's like in Colorado where you're running. Well, first off, thanks for having me on. Uh, always great to see you guys. Uh, and in Colorado, you know, we have the best elections in the nation. Uh, they're secure, they're accessible. And as Secretary of State, I, I take it as my duty to make sure that every Republican, unaffiliated and Democrat has access to, to the franchise. Uh, we are seeing the effects of the big lie across the country. Um, for example, in Colorado, I had to address an insider threat when a local county clerk actually breached her own election system trying to prove the big lie. Uh, we are seeing the big lie being used to destabilize American elections, from voter suppression bills being passed, fake audits, uh, you know, threats to election workers. So the nation is really at code red. And talking about those election deniers now running for secretary of state across the nation, we have a huge opportunity in November to save the country. So as secretary of state, what can you do to bolster the election? Because they are under assault from a lot of people who want to either tamper with them or just say that what happened didn't happen. What more can be done to make the election secure? Well, number one, America's elections are secure. They are safe and secure. Uh, voters, votes count. Uh, and we have a series of things we can do to evolve with the emerging threats. So for example, just this last year, I passed into law. Uh, it's now a felony to compromise voting systems in the state of Colorado. It's a felony to allow unauthorized access. I also worked with our legislature to pass a law that makes it a crime to dox or retaliate against election workers. That's part of the attack. We are seeing election workers threat and then extremists like Steve Bannon recruiting in. Uh, so there's a host of things that you can do. But at the same time, look, we are seeing Americans' freedom to vote rolled back. We also need secretaries of state who will open up the franchise. That's why I expanded drop boxes by 65 percent, set up automatic voter registration, a program that's registered 350,000 Republicans, Democrats and unaffiliated. So we need to stop the election denialism, stop the attacks on our election infrastructure and fight for Americans freedom to choose their elected officials. Sixty one percent. That was the number given. Sixty one percent of Republicans feel that Joseph Biden is not the legitimately elected president of the United States. How has your job changed? How has your life changed, given the sea of denialism that's around us? Yeah, it's, it's changed a lot. Um, I'm the first Democrat elected to Secretary of State in Colorado in 60 years. Uh, and my tenure has included, of course, uh, international pandemic and managing elections during that. Uh, and then the really the worst attack on, on the right to vote and our election infrastructure in recent times. Uh, so a big part of the job is pushing back on the lies, making sure that Coloradans are aware that there is all of this election denialism out there and to go to a trusted source. But it's also acting decisively, making sure that we're evolving with, with the new threats. Uh, so that's why I set up the first state office at the state level to combat foreign disinformation. Uh, that's why I acted so quickly when we've had insider breaches. We've actually had two insider breaches in the state of Colorado. But personally, 
Oh, personally? Uh, well, it's a, a whole new thing. Um, you know, not only election workers uh, receive threats, I, I do too. Uh, so at this point, uh, two people have been arrested for threatening my life. Um, but I, I think, you know, as a nation, as secretaries of state, the Democrats, we will not stop. We will not be intimidated. Uh, I'll make sure to stand up to election deniers and, and go into blue and red counties to make sure that eligible people can cast a vote. So one of the things you said is most important right now is the battle to fight disinformation and misinformation. Uh, as we're seeing the Republican groups, very shadowy forces sometimes putting out flyers to confuse voters, you know, putting out you know, advertisements that's just blatantly false. How do you, in your post, try to combat that to protect the vote so people know when and where and how that they are eligible to do so? Well, we have great elections in Colorado, um, but this emerging threat of disinformation uh, is something being pushed by our foreign adversaries, Russia, China, Iran, uh, but also from domestic actors, obviously. Uh, and we have to expect people like my mom, uh, you know, I, I grew up in a cabin with an outhouse outside in, in rural Colorado. We have to expect someone like my mom who did not grow up with cell phones, who did not grow up with social media, to be able to withstand really sophisticated disinformation attacks. Uh, and the number one way to do that is to make sure that folks like her are aware of disinformation. So number one, it's alerting Americans of the role of disinformation and sending them to a trusted source. Uh, but more than just that, it's also recognizing that this is a political tool. Donald Trump tried to steal the presidency in 2020. He failed. The actions have not stopped. The big lie is a political tool. Uh, it led to the insurrection on the United States Capitol. It's the foundation of the 34 voter suppression bills that were passed into law last year to strip Americans of the right to vote. Uh, it's the foundation of all these things that we're seeing to destabilize American elections. It's the foundation of, of the decreased confidence that Joe Biden was duly elected, which he was. Uh, so we also, uh, in, in addition to shining light on the lies, uh, we need to push back on the voter suppression, we need to prosecute when people are trying to breach election systems, and we need to make sure that big lie Secretary of State candidates are not elected in November. Maybe the most important thing you said is that the elections are secure and the work here is to keep them that way. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, thanks so much for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you.